What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh. Today we're gonna to be talking about Oppenheimer. I know I'm a little late to the party on this one, so I'm not gonna make this a super long review because if you're watching this video, you've probably already seen the reception or at the very least seen the movie itself. I also might go back to the better format where I actually have my camera on a tripod instead of just holding it, but for now, this is how it's gonna be. This movie is of course about the father of the atomic bomb, J. Robert Oppenheimer, who is here played by Killian Murphy. This movie is directed by Christopher Nolan, who if you don't know who Nolan is, just go do a quick Google search. This movie was kind of a big history lesson for me because I honestly know very little about this kind of stuff. I'm not really a history buff, so I knew very little about the person behind this, and I found it to be fascinating alone just to learn about how Robert and the rest of these physicists sort of discovered the atomic bomb while working for the Manhattan Project. At the very beginning, Nolan gives us a quote comparing Oppenheimer to Prometheus, and that sort of set the tone for what I was expecting the movie to be like. And I think that gives a pretty clear indication of what the central theme of this movie was going to be. And yes, at times it is very focused on Robert's evolution from just another physicist to the most famous man alive. The guy responsible for either the greatest technological achievement in human history or the worst thing imaginable, depending on whose perspective we're looking at. And that's one thing that I really appreciated was just the sheer number of different characters and all of their perspectives that we get on this issue throughout the film. But there's so much else going on in this massive epic film that takes place over the course of three hours. It's part courtroom drama, part war, or epic. There are some sequences that are shot in black and white to indicate what time they're taking place in because the movie does jump back and forth between different times. Occasionally Nolan uses visual and audio distortions to sort of portray what the characters are thinking about or feeling at the moment and that really worked for me and, and in some instances it was actually super disturbing. I mean of all the active directors working today Christopher Nolan he's just so good at making I guess what you would call classic authentic films. From the way it was shot, to the pacing, to the way the characters work, and the writing, but also the fact that there is supposedly no CGI in this movie whatsoever. And there are so many characters and recognizable actors in this that it sometimes becomes difficult to keep track of them. It's almost like the film warrants a second time watch, which I will probably do at some point. But I genuinely can't think of the last time I've seen a cast this stacked. There are so many like big name actors that I didn't even know were in the movie. I watched the trailer and I didn't see them there. I mean, there's no way I can cover all of the incredible performances here, but just to name a few that really stood out to me, Robert Downey Jr. as Louis Strauss, definitely going to be a contender for the award season. Emily Blunt as Catherine Oppenheimer's wife did not disappoint. Florence Pugh, Matt Damon, and so many of these characters just show up for a couple of scenes and they're still so memorable. That's proof of not only great acting, but also great storytelling when an actor is able to leave that big of an impression with limited screen time. And there's also the fact that this film is three hours long and it's packed with so much inside of it, and yet it never really feels like it drags too much. There are a couple of moments that I felt like there could have been some that was trimmed out. It's tough to make a movie this long that doesn't feel like it has a little bit of fat attached to it. Is this my favorite Christopher Nolan movie though? I would say probably not. It probably lands somewhere in the middle of his roster. I would have to actually go through and re-examine some of his films to make an official ranking. But this does have a couple of flaws that stood out to me. Namely, after the bombs are dropped, it sort of becomes this extended epilogue that just feels like it tries to pack so much story into a very small amount of screen time. Makes me wonder if there's like a four hour cut of this thing out there somewhere because they probably could have extended the film to sort of make the pacing feel a little bit more natural. One other issue that I had, maybe this is just me, but I've seen a lot of other people comment on Christopher Nolan's last couple of films having some pretty poor audio mixing at times. And there were a few moments in this where there was music playing while the characters were talking and I couldn't really understand what they were saying because the dialogue wasn't quite loud enough. That's a pretty minor complaint in the grand scheme of things though. For the most part, this is an epic that is well worth watching on the big screen. The visuals are impeccable, the cast is fantastic, the dialogue is fast paced and it keeps you on your toes the entire time. So if you have any doubts, please go and check this out. This is a film that is well worth your money if you ask me. I'm going to give Oppenheimer four and a half out of five stars. So I guess for me there is a winner of Barbenheimer, in this case being Oppenheimer, but do let me know down in the comments which one do you prefer and what did you think of the film as a whole. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content like this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, thanks so much for stopping by.